<laughs> okay. Hey guys, good morning. This is Dee Williams here. I am chiming in live from Staffingpreneurs Academy. And as you all know, we are talking about starting your very own niche recruitment and staffing business. I'm sorry I'm late, y'all. Y'all know I always got to get things popping on this side of town. And um, ah, it is Monday. We're so fired up because not only are we talking about starting our very own niche recruitment and staffing business, but we have a special guest this week in our class. Yeah, y'all know how I am about. So first of all, where are you? What's your name? Where are you chiming in from? What's your niche? You already know that's the steal. What's your name? Where are you chiming in from? And what's your niche? Okay, that's the question on the table today. All right, we are talking about starting your very own niche recruitment and staffing business. My name is Dee Williams. I am coach here and I help individuals set up, launch, run, and scale their very own niche recruitment and staffing business. Okay, so I want you to know what's your name, where are you chiming in from, what's your niche. Now, we're in my live class. I'm about to share my screen in a minute. But we're in a live class. We have a special guest coming in today. And before I introduce her, uh, one of the things that we talk about here in Staffingpreneurs Academy when we're helping people set up their niche recruitment and staffing business is all about your presence, your LinkedIn presence, right? I know we've got Instagram. I know we got Twitter. I know we got TikTok. I know it was the Periscope, right? I know we got TikTok. I know we've got Facebook Live and YouTube. But when we want to talk about real presence in a corporate um, perspective, when we're talking about business to business, when we're talking about creating networks, and remember I tell you your network is your net worth, right? You want to have a strong presence. And video on LinkedIn, talking to people on LinkedIn, networking on LinkedIn, getting into groups on LinkedIn, just being a part of the LinkedIn community is how you're essentially going to grow your business. So... I brought somebody in who is not a stranger to Staffing Preneurs Academy. As a matter of fact, for the last five to seven years, this amazing person <laughs> has literally been coming in and teaching us and training us and keeping us up to date on all the things that we need to do to, um, to essentially keep our LinkedIn profiles together, up going. So I'm going to bring her in. I just want to give a quick shout out to Beth. And and Jeffrey, hey Jeffrey, I've not talked to you in forever. Where you been, Jeff? I got Jerry Las Vegas niche speech pathology. I love it. Um, I got Tanisha from Georgia, still trying to figure out my niche. Don't worry, I got your back, Tanisha. I got L from IT in Ohio. Hey L, that's my girl. Uh, <laughs> I got Nicole from California, and I'm HR, an HR professional, and I have a recruiting LLC. I love it. Hey, girl, I've got Irene from Los Angeles. My niche is clinical staffing. Listen, y'all are on fire today. I am so excited that each and every one of you are here. Let me make my introduction. I, I got to make my introduction. I can't. I, I got y'all drooling at the lips. Or I know y'all are drooling. Y'all like, okay, D, who's here? All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. I want to introduce you to the one and only Angela Pitter. CEO of Livewire Collaborative. She is going to come in and get us fired up about LinkedIn. Angela! Happy Monday, everybody, wherever you're joining from. Good morning, good morning, good morning. If you're uh, overseas, it might be good afternoon, but I am so glad to be here. Thank you, Dee, for bringing me back once again. I am Angela Pitter. Let me just share my screen here. And I talk about all things LinkedIn. And today we're just gonna talk about five things, how to boost your LinkedIn profile views with these five features. So again, I'm Angela Pitter, a little bit about me. My business is LiveWire Collaborative, which I founded um, over 10 years ago. I work with businesses, consultants, coaches, nonprofits to really help them build their brand awareness on LinkedIn. That is one of my favorite, favorite tools, and you're going to see so in a second. If you are not connected with me, take a picture of this QR code here and connect with me on LinkedIn. And make sure you put a little personal note and tell me where you met me. So let's get going. I'm just going to give you a little bit about LinkedIn that you may not be aware of, um, some numbers. 
So there's over 900 million members on LinkedIn around the world. And a matter of fact, these numbers are growing by leaps and bounds. I would guess by the end of this year, there'll probably be over a billion members on LinkedIn. There's over 58 million companies, 600,000 plus nonprofits, jobs, jobs, jobs. LinkedIn, if you were on LinkedIn from the very beginning, by the way, I've been on LinkedIn since 2006. LinkedIn started up in 2003. But if you remember way back then in the early years, it was pretty much really about jobs. It is not that platform anymore. It is not your grandfather's platform. It has evolved and has evolved quite a bit since COVID hit. And for you guys, if you're trying to meet those decision makers at companies, those senior level people and those decision makers, they are all on LinkedIn. So the first thing I'm going to talk about here is, are you on LinkedIn? So I want to launch a poll for the folks that are here in the Zoom. And I want you to tell me if you're here on LinkedIn. So let's see here. So answer that question. Do you have a LinkedIn profile? Yes or no? And that same poll is running on YouTube right now. So if you're on YouTube. And you if this answer is no, by the time we get to the end of this, I need that answer to be, I'm going to be doing that tomorrow or tonight. All right, we can give you like one more second because we got lots to cover here. And Angela, All there's right. also the same poll is running on YouTube. So if you're streaming okay. in from our YouTube channel, uh, Monica is actually man monitoring that poll as well. So we've got a number okay. of polls going. All right. All right. So I'm going to stop this poll because I'm not going to be the only one going to go through. So the majority of you have a LinkedIn profile, which is great. What are we, what are we, what is it looking like on YouTube? What are those numbers? Monique, open your line. Tell us. On YouTube, we um, similar numbers. Monica, can you open your line? Yes. So we had 89% say yes, and 10 the rest had said no. Okay, that's good. So the, the majority of you guys are on LinkedIn, and that's what I really wanted to hear. So there's three things I like to talk about on LinkedIn. The A, the B, and the C. So the A is the power of attraction. That's what we're going to focus on for the next 30 or so minutes, right? How to make your profile a lead magnet. Now, there's also two other components. How are you going to build up your quality network? You know, uh, D said earlier, your network is your net worth. We're not talking about that today, and we're not going to talk about how to use this platform to get the best content out. But we come back, and maybe we'll cover these other two. But today, we're going to talk about the attraction. And here's the five areas of the profile that I really want to focus on today. It's how you create those visuals, those photos to stop the scroll. You know, they always say a picture is worth a thousand words. Crafting a compelling headline. I love that Dee's focusing on your niche because the riches are in the niches and you want to make sure your headline is very obvious in the, your niche is very obvious in the headline. And then the voice, there's a voice option. Some of you may not even know that even exists, so we'll cover that. And then how to use that feature section to really be your sort of living portfolio. How do you share all those articles, you know, YouTubes that you're in, if you're in a conference, all the panel stuff. How do you include that, incorporate that on your LinkedIn profile? And finally, how do you use skills to make sure that you're found in search? LinkedIn in the last month has made so many changes to the skills section, and I'm going to share that with you as well. Okay, so if we talk about the branding elements to build up the, you know, make that profile a lead magnet, we're really talking about the photos, the voice, the video, the headline, and that feature section. I'm not going to talk about the video today, but I will talk about the other four. So let's start with the photos, right? So LinkedIn's own statistics say with a photo, you're going to get 20 more times, 21 times more profile views, 36 times more messages, nine times more connection requests. But do you have a professional photo? What's the last time you updated your photo? So I like to always talk about this. My number one tip, the F3 rule, fill the frame with your face. So I'm going to stop share again because I'm going to launch the next poll, which is I want to know how many of you have a professional photo. 
And I want to know not that you only have a photo that is current, that is not old. Right. So if you haven't updated your photo, that is key. The one thing I hate is I'm going to meet somebody for coffee. I look them up on LinkedIn. I look at the photo. And when I meet them in at for coffee in person, I can barely recognize them. Why? Because the photo on LinkedIn is 10, 20 years old. We do not want that. We want to make sure we have a current photo. Okay. So it looks like I'm going to end the poll here. Um, is a combination. Most of you got some old photos. Most of the, mostly everybody has a photo. A couple of you don't, but we still have some that um, it's like a 50 50 between whether it's a current photo and an old photo. So what do we have on YouTube? On YouTube, we got 88% yes and 11% no. Okay. All right. That's good. So the main thing is here that you do have a photo. So I'm happy about that. But let's make sure it's not the body shot. Right. And I, and I, I, I don't want to call out the guys, but I find that guys do this a lot. Guys love that body shot photo. And if these are great photos, but they don't work on LinkedIn. Why? Because LinkedIn ends up squishing your whole body into this little square. So when people are searching for you, they can't even recognize you because you have a full body shot. There's a place for the body shot and it's not going to be here. So let's talk about the background. Do you have a background? Or does your background look like this? This basic, bland, bare background, right? And I'm not going to have another poll around that, but we're not going to do a poll. Where I'm all polled out right this second. So, but let's talk about it because this background is prime real estate, folks. You need to utilize that background as a branding element. If you think about when you're driving down the highway, 50, 60 miles an hour, right? And you see that Nike billboard? Just like in that, two seconds, just do it. Just like that, it clicks in your mind. Think of your background as your billboard. Remember, pictures worth a thousand words. So here's some samples here. So here's a, a, a search gal. You know, you can see right in her background, she says, building your software engineering and tech leadership team. So, you know, there's no mistake about what she's doing and why you want to connect with her, right? And then she has a picture of her speaking. So, again, if you're looking for speaking engagements, you may want to have a picture of you speaking, right? Same thing here. Um, speaking in front of an audience and has, like, the tagline here. So, again, if a lot of people have these three-word taglines, whatever your tagline is, in this case, learn, grow, thrive, this is a great picture when you're in front of an audience, uh, including that on your background. If you're an author of a number of books, Include your books on your background, right? Or if you know, again, if you're around, maybe DEI is your thing, you might want to have one of these, I am for equity. LinkedIn does have a number of background templates baked in, but I would encourage you to use tools like Canva. Canva has, if you literally type in LinkedIn background template, a whole thousands of different templates will come up that you can now customize and make your own very easily. I just want to caution you around the text. I love this that you have. If you have a minority owned, a woman owned certification, definitely include that. If you have, you know, put your website up there, but you have to be careful with the, if you have a super long tagline, because this kind of overstates the whole picture and it's, it's, it's a little too cluttered. Um, I would have cut it out cut it off right here, you know, with out of the box solutions and the rest of this could disappear. So just again, just be careful of having too much text and it overpowers the background, right? So a couple ideas for you, you know, your photo of an office, you talk about your products, your services, credentials, achievements, awards, certificates, you know, again, if you're a, co a coach, you could put on some of your certificates in there, a call to action. Um, you could talk about a signature event. If you have a big event coming up, Dee could have put this whole thing in her background today. Or if you're celebrating a special milestone, um, you know, this year, you know, if your business may be 10 year anniversary, something like that, you might want to put something like that. So there's different ways to approach it. Now you also have this other option where you can actually include your voice on your LinkedIn profile. How many of you knew, knew that? Let me just, I'm going to stop share. I'm not going to do a poll, but just show me a show of raise of hands if you knew about this voice element on your LinkedIn profile. So you can just do me a thumbs up. Okay, I got, I got one. Anybody else? All right. Uh, wait for it. Wait for it because you're going to love this one. 
because it's so, so easy. You literally have 10 seconds. You have to put it on. You have to do it through the LinkedIn app. Um, so let's check out Ariel Lee here. And let me do a new share. And let me share some sound so you could hear it. So you see this little icon? That means she has the voice set up. And you, again, you have to do it through the LinkedIn app on your, on your mobile. But listen up here. Hey, y'all. It's Ariel Lee, your favorite non-born financial advisor. Also LinkedIn coaching to try to cut down on some of those cold pitch DMs. Bless their hearts. So you see, you can say more than your name. It was designed for people who had complicated names that you can never pronounce. So you give them the opportunity, they can say their name, pronounce it correctly. But you have 10 seconds and you can do a lot in 10 seconds. You can see Ariel Lee. Hey y'all, it's Ariel Lee, your favorite non-born financial advisor. Also LinkedIn coaching to try to cut down on some of those cold pitch DMs. Bless their hearts. See what I mean? So you can do a lot with that voice thing. You have, you know, you can talk about what your offering is. You can talk about your clients. You can do anything with that voice element. On her profile, you're also gonna see um, this little link here. Now you only get that link if you have creator mode on. I don't encourage creator mode um, unless, you know, you see in this case, see how she has like 51,000 followers. Like if you have over, I would say at least 1,500 connections, followers on your profile, then add that creative um, mode, turn it on. And the reason I say that is because what happens is you only get the follow-up. People can connect with you, but they are encouraged to follow you. And when people follow you, you're not connected to them. So you, they can see your content, but you can't see their content. So if you don't have a good base already, and that's why I said wait to at least get to a thousand connections. So you have a thousand people that you're connected to, you're working on building those relationships on LinkedIn. You don't want people to just automatically follow you because that doesn't lend itself to a conversation. That follow button is not converting. You know, like, you know, when you see on social media, you have seen millions and millions of followers on, a, on, a, on even on LinkedIn. And then when you scroll down and look at that activity and see who's commenting or talking or having conversations, it's a ghost town. So don't focus on that number. I don't like, you know, sometimes people get on LinkedIn, they automatically want to go to creator mode. Nope, I don't think you should. Now, this is the part that's really, really extremely important is the headline. The headline is that little bit of text below your name, right? And that's where you, again, after you get past, you know, your photos, the, the profile photo, the background photo, you're now at the headline. And you, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you really want to make sure you stop the scroll. So what happens often on LinkedIn is people just literally have their title in here, talent acquisition, senior recruiter at the company. You don't need to name your company in your headline because right over here is the name of your company. Um, you know, recruiter, talent, actor, HR professionals, a little bit more in this one, executive search, hiring partner, VC, prior. So you can get a little idea of what they're doing. Senior recruiter, again, doesn't tell me much about you. There's probably a bazillion head recruiters, um, HR folks on LinkedIn. How are you different? What are you doing different? So your headline is going to be about the who, the what, the who, and the how. Right. So let's look at these examples. Um, Leslie here, HR leadership coach, HR consulting. So remember, everything in your headline, you got 220 characters in your headline. All of it is searchable. Every single word of it is searchable. So think about how people would search if they were looking for somebody that somebody like you and looking for your specific service, leadership training and workshops. Everything this and five favor five five behaviors of a team assessment and facilitation. Now let's look at Katrina, right? Proud every month, not just June, helping nonprofit and school leaders. So that's her audience, nonprofit school leaders retain and develop talent, right? And how does she do it? The secret sauce by centering people and equity in their decisions, policies, and practices. Now we got Robin, and I love this. Culture catalyst who delivers high functioning teams, 
innovator who transforms, you know, so those action words, catalyst, transforms, achievers into leaders, keynote speaker. So if you're definitely looking for keynote opportunities, make sure that's in your profile. And then finally here, we got Michelle hiring tech leaders and software engineers for startups and growth mode companies to build the next best thing. So again, very specific. You want to niche down in your headline, right? The riches are in the niches. So I do want to understand how many of you have a Cubs of his headline or do you just have a title? So I'm going to launch that poll. So you should see this now. This is such a great feature. Yep. Yep. And you got to take advantage of it. Yes. Again, it's all about making your profile a lead magnet. And everybody in here needs a lead magnet. Everybody here needs a lead. This is the, the bane of our conversations and our coaching classes. You know, this is an easy lead magnet. This is a free lead magnet. Right. Mm -hmm. This is one you don't have to go in and create using chat GPT. You don't have to go in and figure out what. Oh, chat GPT is not a bad. If you're stuck and you're not exactly where to start, if you use Bing, especially I like Bing for headlines, it will give you, you, you know, again, give it the context. Right. So you can say I'm a recruiter for startups. For tech startups, again, be specific around the industry. So as long as you're specific, it'll give you a couple of really good examples to start with. And then you can customize it further. All right, so I'm going to end the poll. So the majority, 64% of you do have a custom headline. 36% of you don't. Um, so remember, the big thing about the headline is, like, what do you do, who you do it for, and how you're different. So... Let's just look at that real quick, right? So you want to identify your value proposition. You really want to tailor it to your audience. So call them out. If you want to tailor it by industry or specific roles, so if you're hiring nurses or you're hiring engineers, and then the outcome, right? So again, zero to hero, whatever you did, what are those outcomes that you can include in your headline as well? So let's kind of pull these pieces together. Phil was a former client and you can see, you know, the, the, the photo was very dated. He didn't have a background, but he had the title thing going on here and not a real headline. So after we went through everything, we kind of completely revamped it. He's also a professor at Roxbury. He included the campus here. We updated the photo here and more importantly, the headline. So he's an educator public speaker, and his real gig is sales consultant, helping teams exceed quota with my proprietary active listening training. Who doesn't want to hire Phil right now? So let's move on to the features section. This Think of this whole thing of, as your portfolio, right? This is where all the good stuff goes, right? If you have a post that's really working, if you actually did start a, a LinkedIn newsletter or an article, links to anything. So if you have a YouTube conversation, if you are on a Zoom like we are today, anything linked to on a panel, if there's a conference you're going to be speaking at, link to the conference page, upload any media. So media could be PDFs. Um, so it could be case studies. It could be eBooks. It could be PowerPoints. You can upload anything into this feature section. So here's some examples here. Again, if you have a post on LinkedIn, this is another way to get eyeballs on your content is by adding it to the features section. If you have a newsletter, that subscribe button pops up right there so people can come to your profile and hit the subscribe. Also, again, links to anything. This case is a link to YouTube. And this example is similar, has a lot of links to different YouTube. But she also is a realtor. She also uploaded her home buying guide. So if you got any good collaterals, that you want to share with folks, add that to the feature section here. So again, bringing it back together. Here's four ways how you're going to make your LinkedIn profile your landing page, right? So if I had an event, 
And guess what it was called? Boost your LinkedIn profile views with these seven hidden features. Sound familiar? <laughs> back in April. Put it right there at my background. Boom. I also included it right in my headline. Boom. I also included it right in that link. So they can go right and register from the link. And then finally, I added it to my featured section. So these are ways, like if you are promoting an event or you're running some type of a mastermind or whatever it is, you can add all of these components and collectively, you are now creating a landing page for yourself, right? There's a couple other things you can do on LinkedIn. The URL. So if your URL doesn't have your first name, last name, so if you go to your profile and you go up at the very top, I'll show you in a second, you can edit that and you can make it your first name, last name. Now, there's not a lot of pitters on, and then I was on there so long ago, I was able to grab my own name. Now, it may not be possible for you because there might be somebody else, you know, John Smith or whatever. So you could actually add your middle initial. And again, if you want to think about those SEO words, so if you're, you know, head recruiter, maybe you want to say Angela Pitter, head recruiter, Angela Pitter, coach. Again, what are those keywords that you want people to find you to? So you can add any combination here and it's really cool that um you know clean up your profile um your your url and then make sure everybody can see it i can't tell you how many times i've seen that um folks inadvertently don't have their profile completely visible you want your profile completely visible so no matter whether they're actually logged into linkedin or they're just scrolling on google and just searching that your profile is fully visible and they can see all of the um, areas of your profile, including your photo. So that's key. And a matter of fact, I'm going to just show you um, where that is at. So I'm going to head over to my profile. Hopefully, let me just double check. All right, you should be seeing this. Okay, Hit new profile. Hey, hey, I'm live, live on LinkedIn. <laughs> so if I hit approve profile, um, and right up here in the corner, edit public profile and URL, that's where you find it. Right. And then you change your link here, and then just make sure this is on. And then all of this, and make it public. And then this will all be on. So don't turn off any. That way, no matter whether they're on LinkedIn or not, they can find you. And then let me show you while I'm here where you're also going to find all these areas of the profile. So let me go back to view profile again. Okay, everything's about the pencil. So when you see the pencil here, that's where up here is where you make the edit and add your background. And like I said, go to Canva. They have great templates and just search LinkedIn banner background and a bazillion templates will come up. This is super slow. And then you just change it. Make sure you hit apply. The same thing. Go back to the pencil down here. This is where you're going to get to. So you can you can listen to your audio recording here, but remember you have to create it on your um, mobile app, right? This is where you change your headline here, um, and this is also you know the app, your your contact information is also in here, and people forget about that because it actually also gives you three URLs that you can add in here, right? So I have like my Eventbrite again. How do you get people to your events? Like whatever URLs you want to add in here. If you're active on other social media, you could put those URLs here. So it's just up to you on what you want to include in here. But you got three URLs that you could also add um, to your profile. And let me see. Am I, else, am I missing anything else down here? And this is the, so if you have creative mode turned on, this is also where you would set up the link. So all of that is part of the intro section. All right. So. Let's get back over to the polls. You know what? Let me pause a second. Let me see if there's anything in the chat. Okay. No questions. All right, cool. So we'll keep it moving. All right. 
So there's actually over 20 sections that you could fill out on your LinkedIn profile. And I like to talk about, you'll hear me use the term strategic repetition. So you remember that landing page? You know how we saw the, the event in four different places? That's how I want you to think about your profile. Put stuff that's really important in multiple places. So no matter where they're searching or where they're scrolling, that important stuff is popping up. So there's all these other key sections you can take a look at. And to add them to your profile, you have to go into this add profile section. And it breaks it out into three categories, core, recommended, additional. And then under core is that about section, and your um, position, i.e. the experience section, these skills we're about to talk about, and the recommended sections where you find that featured piece um, any courses, recommendations, and then finally, in these traditionals, basically everything else that's left over. By the way, if you're on a board, do not add your board position to this volunteer experience. Board positions are very crucial, and you want to have them here in, under this add position. So basically, in that experience section is where you want to put a board position. Put board position. Everything else, publication found, this is all fine, put there. And some of this stuff, like some of your publications, you may also, again, include them on the feature section. So don't be afraid to repeat. It's, you're being strategic about it, right? So let's talk about skills, because LinkedIn, my God, they've done so, they literally ripped skills apart in the last four weeks, right? So you can have a maximum of 50 skills on your profile, and this is what's cool is you have at least five, you're going to receive as many as 17 times more reviews. So they kind of categorize your skills as you add them. Your top skills, your industry skills, tools, technology, interpersonal languages. So if you have, um, so again, language is one of those things you could put in multiple places. There's actually a language section as well, but also add it as a skill, right? So optimizing your skills. So let's talk about that. Because I think what happens a lot, I'm going to launch another poll, is that people add their skills when they set up their LinkedIn profile and they never look back. So I want you, I'm going to try and force you today to inventory your skills. I want you to, I want you, I want to know, are they current right now? Did you update them in the last three to five years? You updated them. Or you have the skills section not even on your profile. If you're not getting found in search, that could be one of the reasons. You want to have your skills on your profile and you want them to be updated. Because if you were in a different industry, a different chapter, so back in the day, when I started my career, believe it or not, I was a computer engineer. I spent 20 years in high tech. I did program manager and project manager. So all these skills around project, program, add, all that stuff. But doing any of that stuff now, that's why you need to go back. So when you pivot and you're doing something differently, you need to go back, change, reorder, do all of that. Okay. All right, so I have you part two. Is there a question? Yes, we have a few questions going on here. So we have Lakita on LinkedIn. She said, how often should we change the background? I would say change the background. That's a good question. I would say change the background quarterly. Quarterly, because you know when you're like again, I'm going to use the analogy when you're driving down the highway. That same billboard, after a while, you don't notice it anymore. After a while, you don't notice it anymore. So I like say quarterly with the seasons, put something up there different, because there's always going to be something going on um, that has changed within the last three months. Okay, we got a few more questions. We have Shawanda. What if you have more than one business? How should you suggest to do your LinkedIn cover page? So if you have more than one business, again, you can add, so you could, one, you can set up a company page for each of the businesses. So that's one thing. So if you do that, then you you can actually then connect it to that experience section. But there's a couple of things. So that's one thing. So you would definitely put them in the experience section. But there's also, an, I'm not talking about it today, but there's that about section, which think about it more as a bio, not a resume. But again, how do you weave it all together? Now, if they're completely disparate, separate businesses, then that's kind of hard to do. But if they're related businesses, you can talk about them together in that about section. Great. We do have a few more questions. We have Melissa from YouTube. 
how would you apply these techniques to a person with multiple businesses that um, in different sectors? So that's basically similar yeah. questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Stacy Adams. Um, what if I have a bankruptcy that is complete? Wait, what was that? Her question was, what if I have a bankruptcy that is complete? What about that? I mean, I'm not sure. We that. can ask a different question. Stacy, feel free to reach out to us via email. We'll be more than happy to get more details for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? We are good to go. We do have. No, we are good to go over here on YouTube. Okay. And then what about skills? Like, how many do the people have skills or they don't have skills? What's that looking like? No one's responded to that one yet over here on okay. YouTube. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to move on. So if we look here, there's a couple of you that are current, and you know, there's a, a, a smaller amount that um, um, updated the last three or five years. At least there's nobody that didn't, who never, who didn't respond. I never updated my skills. And then there's some of you that don't have skills on your, on your profile. Hopefully by the time we finish the skills conversation, you will go back and kind of fix that, right? So you want to set up your skills for success. And I would and used to identify sort of the top skills. It doesn't do that as much anymore. And I don't know if this part of it's because they, um, I mean, you literally used to see the word top three or um, on your profile. Um, I don't know because they're making all these changes or does that totally go away? But the bottom line is you can control the narrative. So you can reorder your skills and make sure those top three that you care about the most are visible on your profile. So whatever those three skills are, make sure that they're visible on your profile. The other thing that's new is you can also add up to five skills to that about section. So if you don't have an about section, you're missing an opportunity again to showcase those skills because the thing is with skills is literally at the freaking bottom of your profile. Nobody is scrolling that far down. So by connecting these skills to different areas of your profile, it actually pulls it up further. The visibility is now up front. So take the opportunity to add these skills. Again, you get five to your about section. You can see me, I'm talking about LinkedIn training. That's why I talk about all day long. Content, LinkedIn marketing, social media, social media speaker. Again, looking for speaking opportunities all the time. You can also now link your skills to your experience section. So if you have multiple businesses and they also require different skill set, link those skills to those businesses as well. And then finally, um, LinkedIn automatically does additional linking just automatically. You don't even have to do anything here. So if you see this little thing on my profile where it says show all 11 details, what LinkedIn did is it shows now um, the experience section according to that particular skill. It shows, it links that skill to certifications that are on my profile. And then it linked that skill to publications that are on my profile. So by filling out all these sections of your profile, LinkedIn is actually automatically aggregating this stuff under the skill section. So you'll see it when you go to experience section, but if you're down if someone's actually digging down into your profile and looking at your individual skills, they'll also see them linked here. And it links all these other areas that they may have bypassed um, before. So it kind of brings that to the forefront. So the last bonus we're going to talk about today is the service marketplace. You can also add your services to your profile. And they actually set it up is a service page because it has its own URL once you create it. So if you go to my page now, you'll see this little right here, right again. So we're at the top. So it's all at the top. It'll say what services I provide and it lists them right here, right? And then people can go and they could request a proposal for that particular service. And it shows again, what are those? And you can add up to 10. That's all you can do. Right. And then people can also review. So once they have worked with you, you can send them the little link and they can go back in a review. And again, they have to pick only one. Like you see here, live events, social media marketing, but then they can review. So it looks like that Yelp type of review, which is also a good thing because again, it pulls it into the top of your profile. Whereas 
they can still do recommendations, but those end up at the bottom of your profile. So if you think about real estate, you want all the good stuff at the top as much as possible. Um, and then when they do request um, the proposal, you'll see it in your notifications is where it's going to be found, right? So to add this to your profile is literally buried under this open to. So you have to go to that open to on your profile and one of those are options at the bottom is adding um, providing services. And then you hit that continue. And then again, you can add up to 10 services. You can um, look in the LinkedIn directory here to see what all your options are. And then also, this is also new pricing and you don't have to, you can just say contact. Cause again, like me, I have a lot of different services. Um, so it doesn't make sense to really add this, but I'm gonna show you what the service page looks like and what your options look like. All right, so here's your service page, right? So it just lists right at the top all your business services. But if you look um, right here, sorry, see all services, that's where it is, right? And what's interesting enough, it shows you how many people on LinkedIn are providing like these accountant services. So there's over 500,000 accountant providers, over a million coaching providers, over 3 million consulting. And remember, your services can be within different buckets here, right? So for me, I might have like um, corporate training, right, under the corporate thing, but also under here, I'll have marketing consultants. So you can pick and choose which services make sense and they could be in different buckets, right? So this consulting tab is over 3 million, the design tab over a million, events, if you're doing any event stuff, over 500,000, finance, home improvement, yep, there are landscapes, Hey, I know there's a plumber out here who's going live all the time on LinkedIn. So you can use LinkedIn no matter what your occupation is or the service that you provide. So we're almost at the end here. Hey, Angela, we have a great question from Nikita. Okay. Let's hold the questions. Let me just finish this up. Okay, right. sounds good. So, no, it's okay. Um, so if you look at Robin here and you go to her service page, again, you can see all of the skills, um, the services that she provides, and you can also see the review. And this actually is a really good review. And you remember, you have to select which service you want them to review you for. So in this case, they selected leadership development. And you can see here, triple threat, facilitator, consultant, subject matter, expert, all in one. She's a wonderfully unique and refreshing change agent in today's world. So it was a really, really wonderful review. So, you know, take the opportunity um, to take a um, to look at that service section if, and, you know, if you think it'll work for you. So let me stop sharing. Let's answer some questions. All right. We have Lakita here from LinkedIn. She said, does it matter what subscription on LinkedIn you have? to be able to get the, these features. Yeah, so these features are free to all. They're free to all. There's no, no, nothing. You don't have to have LinkedIn premium to have the service page or to turn on creative mode or, or none of that. Nope, you don't need it. Not at all. Great question. So, and then we have Tony here, one of our staffing preneurs asked, did you mention how to set up your LinkedIn profile when you have two businesses? For example, recruiting business and HR consulting business. Right, so what you wanna do, if you want, now you don't have to do this. So let me share my screen because this would be a better way to explain that. Um, all right, let's get a little bit link then. Um, let's, go, let's go to Deed's profile. D. Let me see what she did. Because you know, D always has a million businesses going. <laughs> see, let's see. Yeah, I definitely have it set up. Right. Talking. So, um, so she has identified consultants. So you see how you can see the little uh the little icon here. When you see the icon, that means it's also uh business page set up on LinkedIn. 
So you don't have to set up the business page, but I like when people do that because you get the icon and then people can go see the business as well. So you can add all of your business here. You see, she has a cannabis job where she has an icon, right? She has individual audacity and she has icons. So she actually has, let's see, one, two, three, four different business pages. Five. More. five. Way more than that. <laughs> Right. So let me see. I'm going to just click on the icon so we can get. So this is identified. So again, see, this is what the the page looks like right now. So you can see, um, you know, the about section. So this is the, the business page, right? But it's linked to your profile, right? So that's what you want. You want to set up a business page on LinkedIn, and then you link it to your profile by adding it here under the experience section. And then what's also cool about it is, you see how she has these different titles here? Founder, founder, and then you can add media. You can add that same media you can put in that feature section. You can also add it here. If you have a podcast series, you can add that here as well. Let's see, got this five. So each sort of sub, you can add, the way I do it is I have a title for each service that I provide. And that way I can add media to each of those separately. Right. So wait a minute. Let me go so back. Founder, Hold, on. You, Hold on. So well, you have a title that? to each service. I mean, you have a service as a job, as a position under, no, under the role. It was under the role. So like your company, right. Right. And so you have your founder and executive, right. Right. So if you wanted to, you have founder and staffing. So if you wanted to, if you can say, say you want to put like, in addition to this founder in chief, if you wanted to put like recruiting services for nurses or recruiting services for engineers or include, or if you want to have the podcast here, so you can then put specific content around each of your services when you break it up that way. So it's Make not, sense? I thought that was only meant for you to put other, whatever you, other brands under that core brand, but it's really, you can do brands and services. Yes. You could mix it any way, mix and match any way to Sunday. But when they ask you about the, um, the dates of doing that, you would just still utilize the dates as if it's employment the, dates. The overall, yep. Just use your overall dates here. And it aggregates it together. Unless, it, it, in order to connect, and you can do it so many different ways. So okay. I had a client, he was in business for 27 years, and he literally had, and, and, it, it's, and he's an innovator, and he's, um, um, let me see if I can find his profile. Um, Lawrence, Lawrence Sperry, here we go. So what we did is we did it as a timeline, right? So we talked about his products, and we did it as a historical timeline is how we treated it. See here? President, what's next? Sales of packaging technology portfolio. Um, focus on innovating e-commerce industry. So we literally made this section more of a timeline to talk about the different type of projects that he works on. Was right. it products or work. projects? So these were the pro oh, products or projects? Yeah. Okay. Like products. Yeah. Okay. And so you can do projects too. Like, again, it's your profile. You can... You can tailor this any way you want. Okay. Well, that's the joy of it. Like whatever makes sense for your audience. Interesting. I love this. All right. What, what, what other questions we got? We're almost yes. at. So we have Cassandra, who's our staffing preneur. She said, My account was disabled. I made a personal and added my business to my profile. How can I get it back? I've been emailing, and for some odd reason, um, don't believe I'm getting the response I need to get it back. Can you please assist me? Um, so that's a project. Um, but what I'm going to do is there's, there's, a, um, there's a link you can use to, there's two things. Go to, um, Ding LinkedIn help on Twitter. Yep. Go over to Twitter and say, yep, yo, I need my account back. So ding them there. But there's also another link, which I can't put, put on my finger right now. So what I want you to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my email in here and let's just take it offline. I'll find the information. Live water collaborate. Okay. Because there is, um, there is, um, there is a um, a link that takes to a support page, so you don't have to be on LinkedIn. So it's not that LinkedIn help that's connected 
it allows you to actually reach LinkedIn help when you when you don't have your account. <laughs> right. Um, and there's a question here. I have an old profile from a uh, past life that said, delete this and start over. No, you can merge them. So if you have multiple profiles, just go to LinkedIn help and look for merge profile and you can merge both, um, both profiles. Even if you don't have access to the old profile email address? Yep. 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 Because it, 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 it'll say add the link if you have the link and if you don't have the link it'll that's when it gives you all these options and and that option when you can't get in support will come in and, and do it for you okay that's great because i got an old profile that i've been able to get into for oh. years right exactly yeah but so even if you can't access it but if you can find it and you because what you what you need to tell it is you just give it that url so if you can find it and cut and paste the URL and then LinkedIn will just merge it. So you don't really have to have access as long as you can get to the URL. Laquita said, yes, they suspended another account of mine and customer service is horrible. So I had to start all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is horrible. I had a client um, and his account got suspended and I don't know how many emails he sent, but you know, I walked with the process through him and, the link that I'm uh, that I'm gonna have to find, and um, when you email me, I'll send you that link. Um, and that's how he eventually got it through, going through that link. Laquita said, "What's the pros and cons of linking the accounts in short? Like, why why would we link the accounts?" And and Laquita, what do you mean, link the accounts? Laquita, are you talking about your personal plus your business? Because you can't have a business account without a personal account. Exactly, you can't. You cannot. You can't start. A, yeah, you can't start a company page without um, having a person. Exactly. And right. that's on all social like, and networks. Why, and I guess the question is, why wouldn't you want to link it? Because the end of the day is when you go to the page, one of the things it shows is employees. So if it wasn't connected, it would like be no employees. Like, so then people would think it's spam. It's like, not real. A but real some company? people, but Angela, some people are starting staffing businesses and they're still working jobs. So they don't want their employers okay, to so know. I wouldn't put a company page up. So that, so you don't need to do a company page right right away. Jessica said, yes. Um, <laughs> you could add it to the experience section without, but, you know, but put it, you can reorder that so that the job that you're working at is at the top and the business is down below. So unless they're actually going into your profile and scrolling through that stuff, and then you, when you add it, you have to turn it off because it acts there's a question there that says, do you want to notify your, your network? Yeah, that's the part you want to turn off. But also, yeah, Angela, turn, if you turn create that off, a... like, add it to your profile, don't notify anybody. And then when you're ready to go live with it, you can turn that back on. But Angela, can you create a business page without linking it to your personal page? Like, I know you need a personal page to create a business page, but you don't necessarily have to add that business to your personal right, page, exactly. right? So, yeah, that's true. That is true, because... If you don't put it in the experience section, it's not linked. Right. So you, that's true. So you could set that up and it's not going to be linked. Because it only gets linked when you put it on the experience section. That's exactly right. So I want y'all to have a business page for search engine optimization purposes. So, but you don't necessarily have to link it if you are one of those people who are working a full-time job and you're trying to transition and you don't want your current job to know what you got going on, then you can definitely go about it that way. Now listen, and the other thing is, and, and sorry to cut oh, you off, but the other thing about grabbing, setting up the page is, you know, owning the URL, right? So you don't want some other company come along and grab that URL. So that's another, another one. That to part, think about. I didn't even think about that. Um, we yeah. only have Angela for an hour. I want to just make sure we have any additional questions. I'm fired up. Y'all know I'm fired up. This was good. It was stuff I got to go back and do. Like she just recently was like, D. Let's go back to your LinkedIn. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the audio was like crazy dope. I cannot wait to go in and, and tease that. I know Larry is on the other end somewhere and, and on, on one of these social networks going crazy about that. Um, everybody, you know, you should have a background. Use Canva or if you all are, are going through our setup program, then we sh you can request that we design your background your custom background for your, your profile because you should already have one that comes with your brand. Um, what else? I see a whole lot. Of, can you repeat, please repeat the support link to go to? She, email me. She's just gonna, email me because I'm going to have to find it. I have to dig it out. So just email me yeah. and then I'll send that to you. Yeah, perfect. Any last questions 
before we show Angela got, some amazing staffing for Nora Love? I got I got one more thing that before we, yeah. we finish it up here. Yeah. All right. So what is your next step? So this is the last and final poll that I'm gonna launch here. I wanna know what the heck that what you're gonna be doing in the next 48 hours. What are your next steps here? Are you going to update your photo? Are you going to create a background? Are you going to create a headline? You're going to add the feature section. You're going to get that URL. You're going to inventory your skills. What are you going to do? I want to know what you're going to do right away, today, tomorrow, not next month, not next year. I want to know what you're going to jump on right away, today, today, today. And for the folks that are here, I'm going to add in here my little LinkedIn checklist into the chat. So go ahead and download that too. Yes. And that will give you all of the how-to steps and everything um, when you go back later to make these updates. I'm adding so I'll audio. A, I'll add, go ahead, add the audio. There's also video. I mean, I didn't talk about video, but you could do video too. And LinkedIn, uh, D, you definitely need to do video. We need you back for a part two because I want you to talk about posts. I want you to talk about carousels. I want you to talk about video. I want you to talk about like lead magnets more and more and more because that's what we all are looking for. Candidate leads, employer leads. Like we need her, but don't we need her back? I know y'all know we need her back. This was so, so, so good. So good. Jeff, Jeffrey says he's going to revisit all the steps and make his profile look way more appealing. That's what I'm talking about, Jeffrey. You go. And you know what, Jeffrey? You you make sure you ping me. You connect with me on LinkedIn. Ping me when you want me to go back and look at your profile. Yes, I love that. The queen has said, background, changing my background, changing my background. <laughs> yep, again. That background is number one lead magnet. It's like right at the top, like it's a billboard right at the top. As soon as they come to your page, boom, that background. Yes. And I will add the um, Angela's uh, uh, email address. Y'all got to come on in. I don't know. You want me to make your email address public, Angela? People on YouTube are asking for it as well for the... <laughs> Well, it can connect with me. The other thing is, okay. just connect with me, and then you can on LinkedIn, and then you can message me. Moni, can you, uh, Monica, can you add? Um, I'm gonna, uh, but, but I'm going to share it anyway. Okay. It's here. Perfect. And Monica, so, can you add so the link? Recap. To let me recap. Got to remember that photo, the F3 rule. I want y'all standing up. I don't want to see no body shots. Go over to Canva. Create up your background. Get that headline. Remember those three pieces of the headline what you're doing, who you're doing it for, and how you are special. Use the voice. You got to do that through the app. Update the por your portfolio with that feature section. Optimize your profile for success. That URL, all of those pieces, the skills section. And finally, the bonus, bonus, bonus is go ahead and get the service page. And I think we got to all the questions. So if you want to connect with me, here's my name. Here's my number. And connect with me on LinkedIn, and we will be good to go. Yes, y'all show Angela so some love. Angela Pitter of Livewire Collaborative, show her some love. She's on fire today. Yes, yes, y'all get those emojis, those light, right? Those hearts, I want them all up. Show her some love. That's so amazing, like literally. Phenomenal. Yes. All right, staffing preneurs. So this is the deal. This is the real deal, Holy Field. Hold on one second. Let me go in and um kind of take over a little bit, Angela. We really appreciate you. There we go. And uh, we'll keep you right here with right next to me. We really appreciate you being here with us. And um, this is our weekly call. Every month we bring a special guest in to help bring our niche recruitment and staffing businesses to life in a totally different way. We are taking over market share. People don't know it yet, but staffing preneurs, niche talent providers, we're taking over the market share. And the work that you uh, shared with us today, the energy, the time, the talent you put in today was so crucial 
um, to what we are looking to do with our movement. So we really, from the bottom of our heart, our community here, Staff Entrepreneurs Academy, we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Not just in our community, but everyone on my YouTube channel. We're about 17,000 subscribers, 30,000 on LinkedIn, 10,000 on Twitter, 10,000 on Facebook, uh, 200 on TikTok. <laughs> I think we have about 7,000 on IG. We love you, love you, love you. We definitely going to have you back. And I will be harassing you to come back. We need a part two because all you've right. got so much I'm, knowledge. I'm, I'm all in for part two. I love it. Staffingpreneurs, you all have an amazing day. Like this channel. Like this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. We want to see all loves. Also, if you're joining in today for the Run It class, that starts in about an hour and a half. Um, 2 p.m. Eastern. Also, what else am I missing? I feel like I'm the replay. Everybody's asking for the replay. If you're a member of Staffing Producers Academy, this is actually going to be as a replay in the Reskillify portal. If you're watching on YouTube, you can just go back and replay the video. If you're on Face, everywhere else is already live. You can go back and hit the replay. I look forward to seeing you all in next week's setup class. Thank you so much again, Angela. Thank you, Staffing Preneurs. And y'all have an amazing yes, day. Thank you for having me. Ah, <laughs> fight up. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let me get by. Let me see. All right, perfect. And then y'all get to see me after the after, okay? Because my Zoom meeting has been closed. Angela was awesome, wasn't she? She was so awesome. Okay, I've got to go into my team meeting, but I just really, really quickly, this, if, if you want to take two seconds, two seconds, anybody want to share where you're at? If you have any additional questions, I'm I'm more than happy to chime in for about two minutes and answer any questions anyone have. Thanks, Jean. I appreciate you. This was definitely so good. This was so good. Look at this. Ah! I really, 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 really live. Okay, so yeah, I want to get y'all connected with Angela on LinkedIn. So let me give y'all Angela's LinkedIn information here. Hold on one second, because she is amazing. And when I tell you she stays on my booty about um, my LinkedIn profile, she keeps me so grounded on LinkedIn. So I'm going to put that right here in the chat. Y'all connect with her. She's awesome. She always does a lot of um, live events on LinkedIn, but she's all things LinkedIn. When I say she'd be calling me like, oh my God, did you see the new feature? <laughs> so y'all definitely, definitely, that's my Twitch channel. Y'all definitely got to check in um, with Angela. That's her her URL on LinkedIn. I really appreciate y'all hanging out with me and, and allowing me to share this great information with you. And uh, make sure you go back and watch the replay because I'm telling you, she started off on fire and she ended off on fire. So I love it. All right, y'all. I'm about to go and do my staff meeting. Y'all have an amazing day and thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and all of that stuff too, okay?